got a hat on today. That's new. Uh, yeah. It's you have I new forgot. earphones. You're like tripping well, me new, out, new. buddy. New, new. Look out, Mikey 2.0 is in the house. <laughs> And welcome to Middleish, the podcast about moderation in all things. I am Aaron Green, and I am Michael Gray. Hello, nice Hello. hat. Hello, hey, thanks. The story. Okay, so I have two stories for you. The story of me wearing this hat today is that I hadn't combed my hair yet. I was working this morning with a hat on, and then it was like five minutes to record time, and I realized, oh crap, I haven't set anything up, and I haven't combed my hair, so I'm wearing a hat. Yeah. So it's casual, it's just casual, like, Mike. It's yeah. casual, casual Mike. Instead of yeah. Michael, you're Mike today. Right. Yeah. A little less formal. <laughs> so we'll go with Mike, you know, a little more familiar. <laughs> and the story of how I got this hat is, um, are you familiar with future public school up there in Boise? No, I'm not. Oh, it's a charter school, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Up there in Boise. I did some, some work with them and their staff, some like, workshop stuff last last spring maybe coming up on a year ago and they sent me this hat and like a button and thank you and yeah that was nice. kind of cool so thanks yeah, Future public school for my hat yeah a little uh free promo for them yeah. i like it though i like having you know t-shirts or stickers or hats or you know little mementos from local businesses that you're yeah. happy to be associated Underwear, with whatever yeah, I mean, because you show off your underwear in public. That's what we should do. We should have middle-ish <laughs> tidy whities What? What's it going to what say on the, back? <laughs> on the back? Our faces on the buns. Who would buy those? Oh, you might be surprised. We get yeah, one of our faces on each cheek, and then on the front it could say, hmm, "What could it say?" <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this could go south <laughs> real fast. Some, some punchline about being in the middle or. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I yeah. I think it's too early for me to make these kinds of punchlines. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's, I mean, I think we do try to keep the show like PG 13, at least. <laughs> Somewhat. <laughs> Somewhat. Underwear, but, yeah. you know, I think underwear is PG 13. I think you just could. You Absolutely. could throw in some yeah, kind of innuendo. Yeah, we're fine so far. But yeah, we could, we could get some innuendos in there real fast that might make some people blush. <laughs> Middle-ish, tidy whities Yeah. Middle-ish, after dark. They could, this is they the could adult be, episode. <laughs> <laughs> they could be bright teal, like the teal mm -hmm. little scribble on our logo. So they're not tidy like whities that. They're tidy tealies. Tidy tealies. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yep. Yep. I am uh, you brilliant. Know, you're right. You are on it today. Buy some I like tidy tealies from Middleish. Tidy tealies. Hey, we got a sale in our tidy tealies today. 70% <laughs> off. I wonder if there's actually a company that you can make underwear with like logo. I mean, I there no has doubt. to be. There I mean, because you can do t shirts and sweatshirts Absolutely. and all kinds of shit. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Be looking for that one, everyone. Well, you know, maybe we'll do that just like as a special thing for like our listener supporters, you know, just to really <gasps> show them how appreciative we are. I Here's think a pack that's of brilliant. Tidy tea leaves. Tidy tea leaves and a coffee mug or something. <laughs> a matching t-shirt. So you can yeah. go to bed in style and walk in around style. your kitchen, you know, semi-covered in your tidy tea leaves. That's... Yeah, that's how we're approaching things. Our our merchandise will be seen by no one aside from the person who bought them. <laughs> Unless you want to post a selfie that just, you know, gratuitous underwear pictures, of course. To see. Yes. Yes. Oh boy. All right. Well, well, we're off to a good start. I feel like we're making a difference. Um really, you know, bringing about change in in our respective industries. You know, speaking of listeners, doing the support, Lord's work. I, 
I <laughs> I do want to share a text I received from a friend of mine who listens. Her name is Amber and said uh, she actually um, is vegetarian and just listened to our plant-based episode or our plant forward yes. eating episode. And, you know, so I was, I was interested to get some feedback on that episode because I do think that there can be some really strong feelings on, you mm-hmm. know, Oh, this is the right way to eat or whatever. Um, which I think we did a pretty good job of, of saying like, there's a lot of ways to choose to go about this, but the bottom line is, you know, anyway, go listen to it. If you want to hear our opinion, but Amber said, I wanted to let you know how much I enjoy your podcast. I look forward to it every week. It's so informational and I love being able to reference my patients there as well. So she is a PA. Nice. Um, so yeah, I thought that was just awesome That's to, cool receive that compliment. And I mean, we've received several others. So thank you so much yeah. to our listeners. Yep. I really like getting those comments. I was just having a conversation with someone who, um, she follows me on Instagram and she listened to the podcast and she just kind of reached out, commented on something that I had posted or something in my stories or something. And then she just mentioned, um, she was like, I just, I love your podcast so much. I love, you know, kind of the just your whole approach, you know, about moderation and sustainability. And, um, it's just, it's really nice to hear from people that this is connecting and resonating with you, you know, Mm -hmm. and that it, you feel like adds value. Um, you know, we, we believe in it a whole lot, obviously, because we're doing it, but it's just, it's always so nice just to have these sort of like unsolicited, like, Hey, I like what you're doing. Keep it up. Yeah. Yeah feels pretty nice. Yeah, it's, it is good. And, and I've had mm-hmm. several clients that, you know, find out I have a podcast and they're like, Oh, I want to listen to it. And they get really excited and they'll in future conversations, they'll say something like, you should recommend this to all of your clients because what the things we talk about reinforces a lot of the messaging and the guidance that we're providing to our clients anyway. And so they might hear something or pick up on something that maybe we just didn't phrase a certain way in a consultation, or we haven't approached that topic yet. And so, um, listening to the podcast, I think has helped in that way too. So Yeah. yeah, it's a good feeling. Do you recommend it to clients? Have you done that? I have, I've, I've referenced specific episodes actually. So Mm -hmm. I'll say like, Oh, you know, we talked about this on our podcast and, you know, maybe listen to this episode to be honest. I don't, I don't think about saying, Oh, and I have a podcast. You should listen to it because (laughs) I, I tend to, I guess I think if people show enough interest in these kinds of things that we're talking about, of right. course, I believe in it. And I, I think it can be really helpful on, you know, on a health journey at the same time, I don't want to just like sh- shove my products and my, you know, way of thinking yeah. down someone's throat. And so yep. I tend to think of it like they'll find it if it's meant to enhance their journey and this is something that interests them, it will come up eventually and they'll find it or they'll, um, we'll talk about it in one of our consults and it'll just happen organically. So that's kind of how I approach it. Yeah. How about you? I haven't, I haven't like, I've done a few like, Hey, you know, we had an episode on that, which feels much better, but just like a general, like, Hey, and by the way, I have a podcast that you should, (laughs) I know you don't get enough of me. (laughs) That's the other. No, I, you're totally right. I feel kind of douchey. Like, well, <laughs> uh, now that you're paying me money, you know what else you should do? <laughs> Listen to my voice a little more. I've a felt that way too. Would, would people, would I, you know, promoting the podcast or suggesting it or something? Um, I, I do worry a little bit that as if you don't have enough of my voice <laughs> ringing through your head and as if these phone calls aren't enough for you. Hey, there's a podcast with more of me. Like, it's, yeah, that's yeah. that's how I have felt yeah. as well. Yeah, but I, um, I do feel so, better just like a specific topic. You know, mm-hmm. like hey, we, if you want to hear more about you know kind of my thoughts on this and you know Aaron's thoughts on this, here's a specific episode that feels yeah. a little better. And I think this is a good um, case for our listeners sharing with a friend or sharing a specific episode that resonated with them or telling people about our podcast, because it, I think it's, it will resonate more with people. If you have kind of a third party, I mean, our listeners, you know, don't have, obviously if they love what we're doing, it's in their best interest to help promote it so that we stay, you know, doing this, which is totally our plan anyway. 
but mm-hmm. I think it, it feels a lot more, um, authentic. If somebody right. says, Hey, I listen yeah. to this podcast. I really love it. You should too. So, mm-hmm. well, so thank and, you. I mean, chances are, if, if you enjoy it, you're there, you're probably no people that would enjoy it and find it mm-hmm. beneficial too. And, and we can promote and we will always promote it, you know, personally, but it's, it's like referring, you know, it's like me saying like, Hey, you know, do you want to change your habits and eat healthier? We can work together. Mm-hmm. That's okay. And that's fine. But when someone else is like, Hey, I've worked with Michael and I think you mm-hmm. would benefit from it. That carries so much more weight, you know, um, cause it's this personal, like I've experienced it and I think it has value. That kind of endorsement goes a lot further than us saying like, Hey, we think we're doing something awesome. <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) Which we do. We do think we're doing something awesome. So yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to, you want to jump in? Yeah. So when Aaron and I first uh, started kind of rolling around this idea of doing a podcast, which was right around a year ago, when we started talking Yeah, um, about doing this, we've we've (laughs) told the story before, but maybe we'll tell it again. Um, We kind of thought about, Hey, you know, Oh, in the previous years, we had talked every now and then about like, it'd be fun to do something, maybe some videos together, you know, that kind of stuff. And then I moved 2000 miles away, which made that possibility a little bit more difficult. <laughs> um, but again, you know, like around a year ago, we were like, yeah, it'd be really fun to do something. And we started tossing around this idea of a podcast and what it could be. And we sort of settled on this idea of like, we just wrote, both really believe in the concept of, of moderation and sustainability and that, you know, there's often a lot of challenges and difficulty on either end of the extreme, you know, and that either end of the kind of the pendulum or, or whatever, it's hard to maintain for long term. Um, it may negatively impact, you know, your other areas of your life in, in a negative way. Um, anyway, so we just kind of had this idea. And as we were talking about that, we thought it'd be fun to have sort of like a, a weekly thing that we did you know, sort of like a little segment or feature or Mm -hmm. something like that. Um, And we settled on, you know, as you know, the mean and the mundane, Um, just that we thought it'd be really fun to kind of close every episode with just this call to, hey, where do we find, where have we found in the last week or so, um, just like a lot of value, um, some real connection with someone or something, in seemingly ordinary everyday type of things, um, which I'll be honest, as it's one of my favorite things we do every week is that me and the mundane. Like I love picking mine out, right? Mm-hmm. And I can't wait to hear Aaron's because I think it's just so cool. And we've had a lot of people, um, you know, send us theirs or, you know, I've had clients, you know, text them to me or when we're on phone calls, like, oh, but hey, by the way, I have a mean in the mundane. And it's just been really cool to see how this, this concept is beginning to help people look at, hey, outside of the, the big and the extravagant, the exciting things, where is their beauty and connection and meaning and just sort of these ordinary things. And so we just kind of wanted to talk about that a little more in depth today. Yeah. And, and when we were coming up with this sort of feature of our podcast, we wanted it to be something that we always could have accessible. Like it doesn't take really any preparation or anything. It just Mm -hmm. would be, you know, we thought about maybe sharing like a gratitude piece, like what's something and meaning in the mundane has a lot of gratitude in it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a really, um, strong message with what we do with the meaning in the mundane is to be thankful for these seemingly insignificant moments that offer, Mm -hmm. like you said, a a beautiful connection to, you know, maybe something bigger, um, and obviously more meaningful in our lives. So to me, it was not only a a nice personal practice, but also encouragement to share all of these different examples of what we found meaningful ourselves so that maybe it would inspire listeners to start practicing that. And, um, and I'm with you, like, I love when people share their, you know, some kind of moment or meaning the mundane. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I would invite our listeners to share more of that because Mm -hmm. it really lends itself to being present. Um, in fact, I I've had several different experiences as I think about 
the, the practice of meaning in the mundane, sometimes I recognize it when it's happening. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, this is it. This is that really cool moment that is just so ordinary, but it's, wow, it's joyful Mm -hmm. or it's, you know, um, impacting me in some way, or it's moving me in some way. And then other times I find that I've been so busy or so distracted or, you know, maybe so driven in other areas of my life that I forget to look for those things. And I have to kind of take pause and be like, uh, so it kind of holds me accountable in that sense that every week, even if you have to kind of reflect real quickly on your week and think about, you know, what, what occurred in my week that was just a, you know, a daily, like passing yeah. moment that at the time I didn't quite appreciate it, but now I can reflect on it and, and think about it. It's, it's definitely holding me accountable in that sense too. Yeah, for sure. I, I, and we, you and I have talked about this before. I don't know if we've talked about it on an episode, but we've talked about it before just how this thing that we wanted to kind of like help bring to people's attention has really like it's taken root in our lives and in our, you know, day to day and week to week. And, you know, when we first started this initially, you know, if you've been watching since early on, you probably remember there are times where I was like, Oh yeah. Uh, Aaron, you go first <laughs> Let me because, think of it real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Or even if I came with one, like it just took me a while to be like, okay, let's think about the last week or what happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, And as we've gone on, a couple of things have happened. One, I have become more aware in the moment, like when something is happening, like, ah, this is one of those things. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michael, soak it up because something really cool is happening right now, right? That you could easily miss. And so just, it's a reminder to myself to like tune in and pay attention and seek into this moment, really be present, you know, whether it's, on my own, listen to a song or going for a walk or with my kids or my wife, you know, whatever conversation with someone. Um, it's really heightened my awareness of those things, which has allowed me to enjoy those things in a deeper sense. Um, but it's also like, it's gotten easier to, if I haven't made a mental note of something in the week to go back through the week, because these things are like having, um, like they're stored like higher up in the fire file cabinet or something, right? Like they have a yeah. higher priority. And because I've given them attention during the week when they're happening, they're like, they're kind of higher up and they're my ability to recall them, you know, um, which just makes the ordinary stuff feel more rich. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because we go through most days and we do these ordinary things and we don't really pull them out of just like the river of the day. Right. But we don't pull them out and go like, Hey, this is really cool. And when we do, we remember that stuff. And so it's kind of like we begin to make these ordinary mundane things, these really extraordinary, exciting, significant, meaningful things. And that just makes like my weeks feel more rich. Like it makes life feel richer, you know, and it's just been really cool how this just kind of, I mean, it was, I wouldn't say a random idea, but kind of, and we tossed just different stuff around and we're like, Hey, that'd be Mm kind of fun. Me and the mundane. Hey, you know, it's got two M's in it. That's kind of fun. It's clever and (laughs) a little ring to it. Yeah. It's become this thing. It's just like, wow, it just has really Mm -hmm. changed the way I interact with my own life, you know, on a daily basis. Yeah. And I think that's a good point that we tend to, and I say we as in humans, but especially people that are, um, high achievers or, um, you know, looking to make a change in their lives or setting a goal, we tend to look long-term or think big and look for the big breakthroughs and look for the big profound things and, um, be seeking those huge moments or those, that excitement or, you know, make reaching a huge stepping stone. There's so many things that we're kind of looking for in that sense. Mm -hmm. But if you ask like executives or athletes or, you know, um, top performers in any realm, they will usually tell you, that, you know, if you ask them, how did you get to this, whatever top tier in your craft, Mm -hmm. they'll usually tell you, I focused on the little things. I, it was the little, every little step along the way you put a thousand little things together and you get a big thing. 
So the meaning in the mundane, I think lends itself to that, where if you truly appreciate these small things throughout your day or your week, it will then breed, you know, contentment and, um, appreciation and joy and these other things that we're seeking. I mean, I think every human is seeking that on some level, but you're looking for big things to provide it instead of just these small little things. And I think that's where a lot of this practice with being present and being grateful and these things that we tend to hear, but it's really hard to practice those things. That Mm -hmm. is what meaning in the mundane, uh, has provided for us. Right. And not, and not dismissing or devaluing things because they happen often, Yeah, you know? And yeah, I think about like, you know, as, as a family, like it would be easy to like, and I think a lot of people do this and I've probably been guilty about of this too, is like, it's easy to be like, okay, when we go on the vacation, like that's the exciting thing to look yeah. forward to or spring break or, you know, Christmas morning or like these big events that are out there. And that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with getting excited about that stuff. Like vacations are awesome. Christmas morning is fantastic and wonderful, right? But if that's all that matters and we got to, I can't wait to get to there so we can, yay, Mm -hmm. you know, then everything in between one is just kind of in the way of the big event, right? And it's just kind of this thing you have to get through, you know, we got to get through all of these days. And when you have that approach, those days just, they mean less and they kind of suck, you know? And I think we'll probably pull some parallels out here throughout this episode. But, um, one I want to make is like, we've talked about before about like outcomes and behaviors, you know, if we're looking to get healthier and all that matters is X goal and the behaviors that lead us to X goal don't matter at all, then they suck to do because they have no value. Right. Right. They're just, oh, I, guess, I just got to check off these boxes so I can get to whatever versus if we really see like, Hey, you know what? Like eating more vegetables in a day and taking care of myself is really freaking awesome. Like, cause I'm worth taking care of and I'm worth, you know, doing things on a regular basis and very consistently, you know, if those things have value, then doing them means a whole, whole lot more and it's a lot mm-hmm. more enjoyable, you know? And life is, life is made up mostly of just (laughs) ordinary (laughs) things, like going to work, (laughs) making dinner, paying bills, you know, giving your kids a bath, reading bedtime stories, going for a walk, you know, whatever, going to the grocery store. Like that's 99.9% of life. Mm -hmm. And if none of that has meaning, geez. I know. Then what are we doing? Well, and then you're right. You kind of get stuck in. Yeah. You get stuck in that cycle where you just think you're not getting anywhere or where's the next big thing going to happen for me. And I think we're, we're all susceptible to that. I know that I have been feeling that more lately, um, just with various, I mean, we can get into the pandemic and what that has provided too. But one thing you were just talking about that I draw a parallel with training. Okay. So training at a very high, high level to compete at a very high level, of course, I want to nail the workouts. I want to have those big breakthrough performances. I want to have, you know, those benchmark workouts where I see a tangible increase in my fitness and I feel, but those don't come around every week even, or, you know, sometimes you might go weeks on end with just kind of like my husband says, wax on wax off. Like you just kind of go through the motions. So I would have every week, I would have training sessions that were just a straight up, like hour aerobic run, like just nothing special. You just go out and run for an hour or you get in the pool and you do like just this easy aerobic, you know, drill session. And, and with some laps, you get on your bike and you just ride two hours, nothing like there's no, you know, real goals of the ride other than to get the miles in. And I think when I was younger, I really struggled with those. Like, well, I, you know, I want to like go hard today or I, I need to push myself somehow, you know, seeking that big, like more is better and always right. looking for that kind of breakthrough workout. And as I matured as an athlete, I really came into the process and how do I, this is the session and the intention of the session is X 
how do I do my very best to execute this session perfectly? And sometimes perfectly means just letting it, like just doing it and, and being, and so I found meaning in that too, how I would really appreciate that. And my coach was really good at like, take the easy sessions easy because man, when the hard ones come around, <laughs> right. they're freaking hard. <laughs> so I really came to appreciate those more just humdrum, like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, go out and just do this really easy session today, or just a simple, straightforward, nothing special kind of session. And I found ways to appreciate those more and to think about them differently and to view them differently. And I almost turned it into those sessions were the time that I could truly celebrate what I was able to do with my racing career and my, my ability with my body, because with those really hard sessions, you, you can't always appreciate it because you're so caught up in, in the, the numbers and doing it right. So those kind of just humdrum sessions where that was kind of my church, you know, it was like my time to like really just celebrate the movement and celebrate the process and everything that's gotten me there. So, so that's another example of, um, I think sometimes how we get caught up in like looking, especially like speaking to the athletes that are listening to this. Um, or if you're, you know, not even quote an athlete that's, you know, training for a race. But if you're looking for those goals that you're setting for yourself and you're always like looking for that, you know, big breakthrough, you know, take, take stock of the process that's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think we, it's, it's so easy, especially with like social media now to like compare like the highlight reel. Oh yeah. Everybody's got a perfect life, but you, (laughs) yeah. And, and, you know, and you see people going on these like big trips and, you know, doing these great things and all this stuff. And, and it's almost like we let other people or this kind of collective hive mind decide what's important for Mm. us, you know, and, and coming back to the theme of, you know, individuality that we talk about a lot. It's like, you know what, there are things other people get really excited about. That I don't care about, mm-hmm. you know, there are some things that, that people find very important that I don't, you know? Um, so I was watching, I don't, I, I'm a big, I, in the last, like probably four or five years, which I'm as wide as you get. Right. But I've really become a big hip hop fan. And, um, and just kind of sinking into that genre and getting familiar mm-hmm. with it and stuff. And I've been listening to a lot of Kanye West lately, which I, I think the guy is an absolute controversy. Genius. I know, but <laughs> absolute genius, personal life aside, just as an mm-hmm. artist, phenomenal. And I watched, um, have you seen, ever seen David Letterman's, uh, my next guest needs no introduction. Have you seen any of those on Netflix? I've, I've heard of them. No, I haven't seen them. Okay. It's just like an hour long ish conversation with someone. Right. Uh-huh. And so he did with Kanye West and he was just saying things. I was just like, oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But he said something about something being important. He stopped himself. He said, you know, never mind. I, I don't like to call things. I don't like to say things are important. And he didn't really elaborate on that, but I kind of chewed on that for a couple of days. And I was like, I wonder what he meant by that. And how, kind of how that's resonated with me is we, we like to have other people, maybe especially a celebrity, right? tell us what's important. Mm -hmm. And I took it as I wondered, I wonder if he doesn't like to label things as important because he doesn't want to influence other people through his lens. Right. And I think that's what we, we do a lot is we let other people influence us and what we deem important or valuable through their lens or this collective, you know, materialistic hive kind of mind. And I think what's really important about this me and the mundane, what it's really done for me is it's really helped me connect with what do I like? What are the experiences I enjoy? What do I find important in the day? You know, what are the things that I want to seek out because they, you know, bring rest to my soul, you know, like what Mm -hmm. are those things? Because if we're kind of lining up with other people all the time and what have they said is important to them. I let that influence me. Well, now I'm trying to, I'm seeking experiences that maybe don't resonate with me at all because I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do, Mm -hmm. you know, versus I'm, this has really helped me begin to go, okay, what are the experiences that really speak to me that bring me rest and comfort and um, enrich my life? 
And I think that's really important um, to, to really do some work to discover for you personally, what are the things that, what are the mundane things that you like, that you enjoy, that, that resonate with you? Yeah. It reminds me of the quote, is it Teddy Roosevelt that said comparison is the thief of joy? Might have been. I think yeah. um, with social media, it's, you're exactly right. And, and even with, you know, celebrity influence or just your friend circle uh, I've had some, some revelations myself, just thinking about what is important to me versus what am I using some kind of, or allowing some kind of external influence to sort of, um, maybe push an agenda in my life because yeah. of, you know, whatever it is, because of a comparison, because of a societal expectation, because my, my friend mentioned this. And then I started thinking maybe I need to pay attention to that too. Um, and so you're, you're absolutely right. I think that's one of the beautiful things about the meaning in the mundane is anybody can practice it. Mm -hmm. There is no right or wrong way. Mm -hmm. The whole point is for it to be something that just happens in your life unexpectedly, or maybe completely right. predictably. I wake up and have coffee every morning, you know, something like that. And it's right. for you to recognize what that brings to your life and why this moment is important to you. And there's, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to matter to anybody else. It doesn't have to be a right or wrong, you know, analytical thing. It could just be like this appreciation moment, um, yeah. which is really cool, especially in this world where we are constantly competing with each other or comparing ourselves to other people, or again, striving for that big, you know, goal. Um, this is a way for yeah. you to, you're, you're right. No matter what you choose, you're always right. right when you pick your yeah. meaning, the mundane. Yeah. And I think too, for me. And my guess is this is the way it is for you. I don't, you can answer for yourself, I guess. But like what I found is there's a lot of like connection in this practice, like connecting to, well, I think we're, we're pretty disconnected in this day and age. Like we may interact with people a lot, but not in a connected way. You know, I think most of our interactions, especially with everything being shut down and stuff, is online, you know, it's not, we're not face to face with people, um, or maybe not going to places as much, that kind of thing. And, and I think that's been one of the biggest things for me is that this practice, it's, it's been about connection, you know, it's connecting me to my physical outside world, things I enjoy about that. It's connecting me to my family in ways, right? It's, it's, it's like connecting me to the life that I'm living, right? And and the mundane pieces can kind of just go by, you know, sort of in the background. And I cannot give those any attention, but this practice has really taught me to connect to kind of that operating, you know, background system that's always going to be to go, okay, like where, what do I like about this? What are the moments that are happening that I really want to grab a hold of? And then also, how can I create more of those? Yeah. How can yeah. I make sure more of those moments happen, right? Like, what are the things that when I'm having a crappy day, help me shake it off? And then how can I have more of those, right? Like for me, it's, you know, being outside for like, just in the weather, going for a walk, that kind of stuff, or just connection with, with Kathleen or my girls. Like, those are the things that really just, uh, it's like a breath of fresh air. And, mm -hmm. and when I become more in tune with those things and, and what those, how those connections look that really are restorative to me, you can, it's not like a, um, what's the word, not like a false way, but you can kind of manufacture those. You can make those happen, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay. So let's, let's set aside some time to spend with these people. Let's make sure I'm getting outside for a walk every day and, so not only are you more aware of what's already happening, you can create more of the things in your daily life that make you feel better and make life a lot more enjoyable. Yeah. And that brings up a really um, kind of funny realization I had when I was thinking about this episode and, and what I wanted to talk about. When you look at our 
topics with meaning in the mundane, the things that you and I have shared with people that are meaningful to us, they usually revolve around our families, our spouses, Mm -hmm. being outside, um, simple joys in life, maybe some friends, you know? So to me, it's kind of this, um, paradox that people get, if you were to ask someone, what is the most important thing in your life? Like really, you know, what is most important to you? They would probably list some of those things like family, friends, my, my work, my, you know, freedom, my house, whatever, you know, my home that I've built, I should say like that feeling of being home or the things that they enjoy doing yet. We, those are pieces of our everyday lives that we probably don't give enough credit to unless we're prompted to do so, or unless you sort of engage in this practice. So to me, it was this really interesting paradoxical look at Mm -hmm. those things actually are what make my life rich. You know, my time with my husband, our cat, the home we've built together, our ability to go, you know, ride bikes and explore the outdoors and have experiences and, you know, connecting with my family, all of these things. Yet I will categorize those into mundane, things, which is really interesting. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that's a, you know, a nice dovetail to your point of, if you really focus on those things that do bring you joy and fulfillment in your life and make you complete, you can start carving out more time and, and prioritizing those things too. Yeah. It's a fantastic observation. I'm really glad you made it because it, it is funny, right? Like the things we would say, these are the most important things to me Yeah, are the things that are probably the most common in our lives. Yeah. <laughs> we're not and you overlook them, them all the, yeah. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. I mean, just the sticking back over the, you know, I don't know, nine months or whatever we've been doing this. Like, I know for you, I know that Matt is very important. I know your cat is very important. I know your friends are very important. I know being outside is very important. I know these things because those are the things you have repeated over and over as this is where I found a lot of value in this week. This is the simple thing that brought me a lot of joy this week. And you've said them over and over and over, you know, it's like, I know that's what matters to you. That's what's important. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been on that list one time, but that's fine. Oh, Michael (laughs) middle-ish middle-ish is my meaning in the mundane every week, every Every week. week. Well, we get to talk about each other all the time, even if it's not in that meeting in the mundane segment, we get to talk about like our, you know, miscommunications or how we came up with Mm -hmm. topics or how we developed something. Yeah. You're in there, buddy. And then when we're done recording and we get off, I'm like, like, thank God. I have a lot to say about you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. You won't believe what Aaron said. (laughs) Yeah, we, we do have a debriefing when we stop recording, just so everybody knows. <laughs> Don't you think that, let's talk a little bit about the pandemic and how this has affected those mundane mm-hmm. things or vice versa, how the mundane has affected us during the pandemic and maybe become more important because, you know, I think about what I had envisioned for 2020 in terms of mm-hmm. those big, meaningful things that I wanted to do. And some of those things were a lot more travel, um, going and visiting friends across the U S that I haven't mm-hmm. seen in years, making up for, you know, lost time in a sense, because I spent so many years with triathlon as my focus that 2020 was going to be a big year for just, living with the people I love and doing some things, experiencing things that I, you know, would set aside for triathlon. And, you know, I had big career goals in terms of going and, you know, speaking at conferences and doing more things, interacting with people. I had a group program. I wanted to start with young athletes. Like I had all of these things and plans and those were going to be my big, you know, like, the, yeah. the big goals, like the things that I'd kind of put on a whiteboard and then start breaking down like the steps <laughs> to get there. And like, these are the things I really want to achieve. And, and of you course, do the that, pan- right? Oh, I totally will write that I shit on a right. I 100% believe that. Come on, Michael. You see the 
the damn lists and bullet lists and tables and oh, shit no. that I put together for these podcasts. So you know that I do it. You just, um, you said that and I was like a hundred percent. I have you no know doubt funny, that that's though, factual. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write all that stuff out and then I'll just set it like on the side and I, I will look at it maybe like every few weeks, but it's like putting it, it's just like the journaling episode that we talked about. It's putting it, it in writing, putting it down on a yep. whiteboard, on paper, on the screen, something, just making Absolutely. it alive, um, you know, kind of brings a new sort of attention to it. So Absolutely. anyway, 2020 obviously didn't turn out how any of us had envisioned. I don't know about you, but I didn't see a lot of those things coming. <laughs> this so. is what I expected. Yeah. <laughs> he predicted this. This was my but plans. Yeah. <laughs> it has really forced me to shift, especially in those early days last spring and early summer of the pandemic when, I mean, people were on lockdown and you're, if I didn't have Matt, man, I would have been, I don't know, like I had just been lonely yeah. and, you know, what bored a lot of the time and, you know, maybe needing to th- talk some of this stuff out and not have a sounding board. So there were I think it helped me really bring appreciation and, and some of that focus back to like those core things in my life that I really can be grateful for and that are very meaningful to me and not the big things that I had kind of put in my brain as being the, the big meaningful things, you know, (laughs) that I was going to achieve. So I think the pandemic has in a twisted way helped with, with this process. Sure. Yeah. And I, I 100% agree. I would probably personally say it. This process has helped me with the pandemic, and maybe that's splitting hairs. I don't know, but that's just how it. No, I think it's I say yeah. It in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, because, yeah, I mean, all the big stuff was taken away. You know, I mean, back to school, any field trips, you know, any vacations, it just. Mm-hmm. Sp- sports, you know, all that stuff. Birthday parties. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was just, okay, all that's gone. And so all you have now is mundane and even more mundane because like, (laughs) you know, it's been like a year of groundhog day, you know, people like, so what's new? It's like like nothing is new. It's just all kind of the same and has been for 365 days now, you know, but I feel like this, this whole practice has been like so incredibly beneficial for me personally. And I think it would be regardless pandemic or not, but especially now, because when all you have is the mundane and ordinary and every day, if you don't, if I hadn't been actively seeking out, um, finding meaning in those things and, and doing this practice and developing it as sort of just like, like a practice that I do on a regular basis. And now it's just kind of something I do a year later. It's not even really conscious anymore. I'm just kind of aware of it and finding those moments and trying to make those moments and that kind of stuff. If I didn't have that, I, I really think my mental health would be in a lot worse place because Mm -hmm. there would have been a lot less joy, a lot more weight, you know, a lot more heaviness just to everything. I think I would be sort of missing and grieving and longing for those big moments a whole lot more. And what, what we've lost would feel like a bigger loss than it has. And I'm not going to say it hasn't been hard at all because of course it has. And there's, you know, I've, I've struggled through this and I've had hard days and hard weeks and, um, you know, felt just kind of hopeless and anxious and all that stuff. But I know that it would have been a lot worse if, if we hadn't have started this thing and been like, Hey, what if we look for a meeting on mundane things and then done this on a regular basis? Because it's just, it's assigned value and, um, just joy and excitement and all that stuff. And just regular things. Like I've always, Mm -hmm. I've always loved, like, you know, putting my kids to bed, reading stories and that kind of stuff. I've always really enjoyed that. It's always been one of my favorite things, but even more so now, like when it's like bedtime and I get to like snuggle them up and it's, it's like, it's like, I love it so much. And I appreciate it more now than I think I would have otherwise, because 
I don't have these other things that are kind of calling me. It's like, this is all I have. And I don't mean that in a negative way. That's all I have. But it's like, this is when you, when you only have certain things, I think it's easier to see how much value and importance they have. And, and it's really, it's, it's helped my mental health so much during Mm -hmm. this time. I know it has because I've just really been able to find a lot of enjoyment in the day-to-day and it's all, all it's been is day-to-day, you know? And so if you can find enjoyment in that, well, shoot, that's a whole lot better than not. Yeah, Otherwise you're just looking at a slog, you know? You're, you're also creating memories that you'll have forever. The more present you are and the more you recognize a moment and you commit it to your brain in more of a long-term profound way, you're going to have that memory to pull off of. Whereas if you're kind of just going through the motions and you're not really present at, you know, the dinner table or the whole bedtime routine is uh, kind of just going through the motions or whatever, I think you're less likely to really, um, create those memories to draw off of, which obviously is super important to you and, and part of your core being, you know, if being a dad and being present for those moments. So I think that's another benefit. I mean, I'm, I'm no neuroscientist, but just from what I have read and heard, if you commit something to long-term memory, like if you really focus on it and replay it in your brain and, you know, commit it to long-term memory, then it's more likely to to stick with you. So you can draw off of those a lot better. Yeah. Well, and, and two, just, I think kind of make a different point, sidetrack a little bit, but so we're coming up on, I think we're like nine months, something like that, that we've been doing this. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this consistently every week for nine months, nine months, not a week, not two weeks, you know, not a month. (laughs) Like, Oh my God, a month, nine months. And just in the last probably month or so has it it's kind of gotten to a deeper level it's settled more within me it's become just kind of how i operate you know i have to be less conscious about consciously noticing they, they, they just kind of jump out at me i don't have to think through them i when we get on to record most of the time i haven't consciously thought about okay what's my meaning the mundane going to be because mm-hmm. i don't need to anymore because i go oh i got this and this and this and this from the last week because I'm just paying attention more without having to be really conscious about it. And so it just is a testament to, again, something we say a lot, like, Hey, consistency really pays off. You know, we've done this. Consi- and I probably wouldn't have done this if we didn't have this podcast. Right. Right. <laughs> oh like, yeah. It's a oh, piece shoot. of accountability. Oh, oh, I got to have one this <laughs> week. What is it? You know what I mean? And it's just, it's, it's been something that's developed and it's just part of how I do things now. Mm-hmm. Hey, look at that. A really healthy habit, <clears throat> you know? <laughs> Yeah. I've even had a couple of friends who listen to the podcast, um, point things out like, well, that's kind of mundane. And then they'll sort of look at me sideways and kind of like (laughs) wink or whatever, you know, this is kind of mundane, but you know, there's meaning in it kind of thing. Where's the meaning, Aaron? Where's the meaning? (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, I do. I think that's also a nice gift that this podcast has given us is that Mm -hmm. little bit of accountability that, if I am, and I've always felt this way about my practice and, and the nutrition guidance I provide and my philosophy that if I am guiding people with this information, or if I am holding others accountable in some way to, um, you know, follow their path, then this is, you know, good for me as well. And so this, you know, this podcast, I think has helped with that. Just the meaning in the mundane every week, uh, forces us to, slow down and appreciate and look at those things. And, um, yeah, it's good. And one of my favorite meeting in the mundane activities is just around the corner. It feels like spring here. And I've already talked to a few friends about gardening and what Mm -hmm. we're going to plant and how that's going to go. So there will be some gardening talk coming up. Nice. For sure. I don't, I'm, so I don't know if, if you're this way, but for me, like, I've noticed like even just enjoying like sensations more, right? Like, like today we have, it's, it's nice. It's kind of cool here. And the, we have our windows open and just like that feeling of like fresh air in the house, mm, Yeah, which I've always, I've always really liked, you know, I mean, growing up there in Oregon, you know, all through spring, we'd have our windows open in the mornings or sometimes the whole day. And I always liked it, but it's like, I just, I just, 
I experience it in a deeper way, right? Of just like, it just like, I pause for a moment and go like, oh, this is a wonderful thing I get to experience mm-hmm. for a few seconds here before I go on to other things. And mm-hmm. you just take a moment and there's just this great little moment by myself, standing in my kitchen, you know, feeling a little breeze. And otherwise I would have missed it, you know? And yeah. so even just like just really small things like that, they don't even have to be like, oh, I had this really great conversation with so-and-so or really great time with my kid. Those things are awesome. But also just these little tiny random things that have just become, um, I become more aware of really just experiencing for even just a few seconds, you know, mm-hmm. it's just this whole practice has just enriched my life in so many ways. Yeah. And it's just been a fantastic thing. I love it. It's yeah. been great. I I agree. It feels it's been good. great. All right. Mm-hmm. That's it. We're, We're done. done with the whole thing yeah. now. Stopping me in the mundane. <laughs> it's been great. <laughs> What's your meaning in the mundane this week? My meaning this week was yesterday. So um, I had to go to Target for, I don't remember what I had to get. I don't know, some stuff. And Lila was done with school and she's like, Hey, can I go with you? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I, you know, she, I always love spending time with that kid. She's just so fun. And it was just an ordinary thing, right? We weren't getting anything special. We were just going and we, you know, we went and we decided to just kill some time and look at some stuff. She had some of her own money that she wanted to spend. So we were looking at toys and clothes and that kind of stuff. And kind of through the, she's at this age now where she's like a little bit embarrassed of me, you know, (laughs) also like I'm a dork. I'll just start dancing in the aisles kind of to embarrass her. And she's like, stop it, stop it. (laughs) Someone I don't know might see you, you know? Um, But so we're just, we're just getting what we need to get and looking at stuff that she wants to look at. And we're just kind of walking side by side. And she just like puts her arm kind of around mine you know, and just kind of holds on to me a little bit. And then she grabs my arm and puts it around her shoulder. And it's just like walking side by side, like hold me, you know, like I want to be close to you. And we just started talking about like, this is really fun, huh? You know, and she's like, yeah, it is really fun. And I just told her, I said, I love, like, I love it when you come to do this stuff with me because I have so much fun with you doing these ordinary kind of boring things. But when you come along, like have a really good time doing it. And she was like, yeah, I do too. I really like doing this stuff with you. You know, I like, we're just shopping for random crap, like nothing exciting, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, And it was just, it was just a really, really cool moment where it's like, we both got to say, Hey, there's some meaning here in this mundane thing. So it was, it was a lot of things. It was cool for her to make that connection. It was really meaningful for me, for my daughter to like, who's kind of embarrassed of me, you know, but like want to be close to me and holding on to me and just wanting to be affectionate, even in public. Right. Um, And it was just good to laugh with her, but it was also, I thought later I was like, Hey, I got to instill in her for a moment, look for meaning in these ordinary random things and these mundane things, because it can be there, you know? And if you think, Hey, you know, at nine years old, do you want to go to the store with your dad? Eh, probably not. That sounds like a pretty boring thing, you know, but she's connecting like, yeah, you know what, when we do this stuff, we do have a lot of fun together. Like it's a really good time. And so it was just cool for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. It was just a really, really neat little, I don't know, 45 minutes or whatever that we were there. I love that. I was going to, I was going to point out that connection that you're passing on that practice of the meaning and the mundane to her, which is I think has to be every parent's like, you know, glowing moment of a day is when something catches on in your child that you've been kind of working toward or hoping would, you know, grab hold. And then you see it and you're like, Oh, wow. You know, I've been planting that seed for a while and here it is. So yeah, very cool. I like it. So mine is uh, I have one friend that I have been just one driving. I only have a friend, <laughs> a single friend. I have one friend that I have been Sorry. skiing with this year that I've been commuting yeah. with to the ski hill. And he, I mean, we wear masks. He's now vaccinated because he's a nurse and I've 
we still wear masks. Like we just have this agreement that, you know, you're kind of in the family. And he, I mean, we, we've sort of involved him in our household since the pandemic started. So he, he's sort of been like part of the household. Um, so my buddy, Troy and I have gone up to ski, I don't know, almost every weekend, sometimes a couple times a weekend during, you know, um, times when we can get up there and we'll just skate ski. And to be honest, the drive is my biggest deterrent because it's about an hour up and about an hour back. And that drive is very windy and there can be a lot of traffic and toward the top, the roads can get shitty. And so there's just kind of, I don't know, for me, I'm less likely to make that drive drive. (laughs) by myself up bogus. But if I have somebody, I mean, part of the fun of driving up the ski hill is the conversation in the car and hanging out with your Mm -hmm. friends. And, and so I have like a list of people that I would commute with and carpool with over the years. But then because of the pandemic, I've been very, very selective about, you know, sharing cars with anybody, you know, much less in an hour drive up and an hour drive back, um, up the mountain. But my buddy Troy has gone with me several times and I just, I love our conversations because we chit chat all the way up and all the way back. Sometimes we rant about politics. Sometimes we just crack jokes. A lot of times we reminisce about riding our bikes on bogus basin road because we're both cyclists too. And it just has made the commute so much better, but also our friendship has grown because of it, because you just get to know people, you know, when you have that much time just sitting there chatting. Um, so something as mundane as the drive up bogus, which I sort of loathe, you know, I'm not real excited to do, um, has been quite meaningful because especially because I do have more than one friend in my life, but (laughs) my, my time with friends has been very limited during the pandemic for obvious reasons. And so it's nice to have that friend connection too, um, on that drive. So that's awesome. mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. What a great thing to like recognize Mm -hmm. about just, I mean, that's a pretty mundane thing, Yeah, driving up ski slope, but to connect that, 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 that meaning and that value and just that the importance of that connection and how that makes the whole thing a whole lot better. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep. I really love this, that we do this. Like, I love that we do this every week. Well, it's good. Just, we'll keep doing it. It's, it's so valuable, you know, it really is. Yeah. And you know, what's been fun is we haven't had a guest for a while, but I think all the guests we've had have done it. Right. Yeah. And, we sort of throw them, throw them under the bus and say, we do this yeah. thing better get ready. But I think, I don't know if all of them, but most of them have commented, like, I really like this idea. I'm really excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which is just, yeah, it's just such a fun thing mm-hmm. and me and very meaningful. It's fun, but it's very meaningful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we would love to hear more of your meaning in the mundane moments. So if you want to share them with us, you can, I mean, if you have a direct channel to Michael or I, you could text us, you could email us middleish at gmail.com. You could comment on any of our posts. We are on Instagram, any of that Mm -hmm. stuff, but tell us your meaning in the mundane. Share away. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, we would. Cool. Well, thank you everybody for listening. Um, We hope you've yeah found this entertaining and valuable. And like Aaron said, please, and we would love to hear this stuff, how this like practices either you're beginning to implement it or how it's maybe impacted you if you've been doing it for a while. Cause I know some of you have, cause you've, you've told us. So just to hear how that's kind of, um, yeah, played out in your life, I guess, how it's benefited you. We'd love to hear that. Yeah. But as always, thank you for listening. Um, you know, we appreciate listener support. If you'd like to support middle-ish, um, you know, this podcast, you can do so via a link below in the show notes. Um, we really appreciate that support. And as always, you know, share, subscribe, rate, review, all that stuff. It all helps to kind of help spread the message of English. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye.